What's going on guys? It's Drama back at it again with another episode of NBA Kicks, the show where we count down the 10 best sneakers in the NBA every single week of the season. This is actually the last episode before we get into the play-in and the playoffs. We got an incredible list for you guys. There's one shoe on the list that pissed me off and I'm not talking about like in a good way. We have another debut signature sneaker. That's always very exciting. And we also have two sneakers on the list that are so self-aware, it just makes me happy inside. That's what we have in store for you guys. It's an incredible list. I hope you guys are pumped to check it out and I hope you're pumped for the play-in and the playoffs. We will be doing NBA kicks throughout the postseason. So keep it locked right here for brand new episodes. But for now, sit back, hope you got a snack, and enjoy this week's episode of NBA Kicks. <laughs> Starting off the list at number 10, we have George Niang with the Zoom Freak 4. So leaked images of the Freak 5 have actually started to pop up on the internet lately. And to be honest with you guys, I'm actually really upset about it because it looks like the Freak 5 is getting rid of the Freak Line's signature feature. The reverse swoosh has been a staple on the Freak Line ever since its conception. And to me, it's one of the most identifiable features in the signature sneaker world. But again, it looks like the upcoming fifth signature model will do away with the reverse swoosh. That's a bummer because the reverse swoosh again is just an awesome look. As you can see here with Niang's custom colorway of the Freak 4s, which use a basic white and black color scheme, but has a rainbow infinity logo on the heel, which is the official symbol to raise awareness for autism. I know it's a pretty simple colorway, but it is clean and it does raise awareness for a good cause, but I also just wanted to find a way to mention the Freak 5s and how they might not have a reverse swoosh because I want to be on record saying that that is going to be a huge mistake from Nike. So Nike, don't take your own advice this time and just don't do it. You got it, dude. <laughs> Next up at number nine, we have Precious Achua with the KT Splash 5.0. If you've been feeling like sneakers have been getting stale lately and everything kind of looks like each other, I implore you to take a look overseas and check out what these China-based brands are coming up with, such as Anta and these KT Splash 5.0s. Obviously, this is a very striking visual design with a low-cut collar, interestingly sculpted midsole, and of course, a very unique strap design, which actually goes through the TPU overlay on the midfoot and under the Eclipse plate-like design on the outsole. On top of that, this colorway here is actually super cool as well with what looks like a shark graphic on the heel. I could be wrong about that, but the whole splash theme got me thinking that this is some way related to the ocean. Either way, this is still a very unique silhouette that I would like to see in some more colorways in the playoffs because I think if these had a swoosh on it and were called the GT Cut 3s, people would be more interested in them. But I say that about all the China-based brands. So let me know what you guys think about these in the comment section below. Coming in at number eight, we have PJ Tucker with the GT Cut 2. The Sneaker King makes his last regular season appearance on NBA Kicks with a player exclusive colorway of a fan favorite silhouette. This colorway of the GT Cut 2 uses pretty much every single color on the spectrum, which remind me a lot of the what the colorways from years past but this is actually a player exclusive colorway, as you can tell with PJ Tucker's logo on both of the tongues. Personally, these are just a tad bit too loud for me, but I know the kids are super into these crazy color scheme these days, so I had to give the Sneaker King his respect here. And also, people absolutely love the GT Cut line. So I feel like if I didn't put these on the list, I would hear it from my true fans. So here you guys go, GT Cut 2, PJ Tucker, Player exclusive colorway, that's more than enough for the number eight spot. Next up at number seven, we have Kevin Durant with the KD15. It's been an interesting year for KD and it's been a quiet year for him on NBA Kicks, but it looks like KD is going into the playoffs healthy, which means we might see him featured more on the show. But for now, let's talk about this new colorway of his 15 signature model. 
Using a very bright blue and orange color scheme, this colorway has a variety of patterns on the upper, with that polka dot graphic overpowering everything else, while the rest of the colorway is complemented with shades of orange, which complete the overall playful look. But at the end of the day, it's the loud and bright sneakers that stand out the most on the court, and this colorway of the KD15 is definitely loud and bright. KD15's a solid looking sneaker. We just haven't been able to see a lot of it on NBA Kicks this season because of course KD's been in and out of the lineup and we know he got traded and look, who knows? Maybe Nike's finding it hard to get him new colorways because of the turbulent nature of his season. I'm not sure. What I am sure of though is that it's great to see KD back on NBA Kicks. Next up at number six, we got LeBron James with the LeBron 20. This colorway is simply on the list because while I was watching the Laker game with my girlfriend, she pointed out LeBron's sneakers not once, but twice. Now look, don't get me wrong. I think this colorway is pretty cool as well. It has a super unique color scheme that really fits the silhouette, but when a non-sneaker head points out from a distance that those shoes are cool, you have to respect the appeal that that sneaker has to the everyday person. And plus, like I said earlier, it's the loud and bright sneakers that stand out the most on the court. So it's kind of hard to keep your eyes off of these, but I would be remiss not to mention that I'm expecting even better things from Nike for the King as the Lakers make their playoff run. I'm just hoping that this year's playoff run isn't as short as uh, some of our previous ones. Coming in at number five, we got Jason Tatum with the Tatum one. So I'm pretty on the fence with the Tatum one. On one hand, I feel like the visual design of the silhouette is somewhat uninspired. But on the other hand, Jordan Brand has been absolutely lacing JT up with some incredible colorways, which kind of make up for its uninspiring design. This colorway uses a black upper and outsole, which are complemented with some very cool graphics on the mudguard as well as the tongue, and the subtle hints of orangish brown on the branding and eyelets complement everything really, really nicely. And this is the type of colorway that reminds me of an old school 90s sneaker in a good way. Next up at number four, we have Malik Beasley with the battle from x -Tab. All right, so this sneaker is not gonna have the same name brand appeal as some of the other sneakers on this list, but I really don't care because this sneaker is absolutely incredible. This silhouette comes from a China-based brand called Xtep, who are probably most famous for being a company that Jeremy Lin signed with, but here we have a silhouette called The Battle. Yes, that's actually what they're called and it uses a very sharp design philosophy, which is accompanied with an incredible colorway that uses iridescent overlays, as well as a black and white color scheme. I mean, seriously guys, just look at these things. These are by far one of my favorite sneakers of the season so far. And what I love most about them is that it looks like they could belong in the 90s. It looks like they could belong in the early 2000s, the late 2010s, the modern day. It's just such a versatile look and I'm absolutely a fan of them. And I dare you to look me in the eye and tell me differently. Next up at number three, we have Kawhi Leonard with a hilarious pair of Kawhi threes. This colorway from New Balance is so self-aware that I personally love and respect it. Now let's not beat around a bush. We all know that New Balance is often referred to as the brand that your dad wears, specifically those super basic gray New Balance sneakers that, let's be honest, your dad or grandpa has definitely owned. But you know what? I'm actually starting to see a lot of kids these days rock those very sneakers. So I think the whole dad or grandpa shoe trend is officially in and New Balance capitalizes on that with this new colorway of the Kawhi 3. This colorway would be like if Nike dropped an Air Monarch colorway of the LeBron 20s, which would actually be awesome, but Nike didn't have the savviness to do that yet, so New Balance beats them to the punch here with a pair of Kawhis that look just like a pair of 990s, and what's most impressive about this colorway is that style is perfectly translated onto this modern silhouette for an overall package that is pretty much perfect. Coming in as our runner up, we have Steph Curry with the Curry 2 Flotro. 
So here's another super self-aware colorway that is actually trying to right a wrong and I feel they do that successfully. So we all know that everybody roasted the hell out of the Chef Curry Curry 2 lows. I mean, seriously, it was one of the most vicious attacks on a sneaker that I can remember in a very long time. These shoes look like a golf cart had sex with a jar of mayonnaise. But now Under Armour and Curry Brand are back with a vengeance, with a new take on that very same colorway that everyone seemed to hate, but this time with a burnt up graphic on the toe box, which not only fits the shape of the silhouette seamlessly, but is also symbolic in that it's burning its mistakes and creating a new success. Well, I guess success is pretty subjective, so let me know what you guys think about this colorway because I feel that they're pretty dope, with my only complaint being the Under Armour logo on the midfoot. They should have just left that off, which would have allowed the Curry brand logo on the tongue to shine instead of like competing with another brand logo. But other than that, I love this colorway. I think it's awesome. And at the very least, if you don't even like these, you got to respect that Under Armour is acknowledging that people didn't like that previous one and they're trying to rectify their wrongs by creating this one. Finally, at number one, we have Luka Doncic with the debut of the Luka 2. So these were a pleasant surprise because usually we don't get to see debut signature sneakers on literally the last day of the regular season. But since the Mavs aren't going to be in the postseason, this was Luka's literally his last chance at debuting his brand new signature sneaker. The Luka 2 uses a very similar shape to its predecessor, but this time around, everything looks a little bit more robust. Right off the bat, I am absolutely loving the variety of materials that we are already seeing on this colorway, as it gives the silhouette some depth, but I'm also enjoying this colorway on its own with a very nice black and purple color scheme with subtle hints of aqua on the branding as well as with the speckling on the midsole. I'd also be willing to bet that that is a glow in the dark outsole as well because it has that milky translucent green look to it. But overall, this is a very modern sneaker that I think will catch the eye of a lot of consumers if they saw these on the shelf. Look, I know it's early, but I'm going to give Jordan Brand an A- minus here with the Luka 2 because they look like a solid encore performer, they debuted them in a solid, more than solid colorway, and they also surprisingly have a lot of off-court appeal, a lot more than I was expecting. And plus, look, we have rules here on NBA Kicks, you know them. If you debut a signature sneaker, that is a guaranteed spot at the top. So I am officially now crowning the Luka 2 as the best sneaker worn in the NBA during the last week of the 2022-23 regular season. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this week's episode of NBA Kicks. I gotta say, it was an awesome list. Usually towards the end of the season, we don't get a lot of new sneakers, but the fella showed up this week. So huge shout out to everybody. And shout out to you for sticking this far in the video. Drop me a like if you enjoyed it. My name's Jaron Isberg Avenue. I'll catch you guys in next week's episode. Peace.